Hello and welcome to my review of the uh, Elka Watch Company Series D uh, that we see here on the table. Um, today we'll be going through uh, the specs, of course, the brand, a little bit of brand history, uh, the design, at least my opinions on the design, uh, quality, and then hopefully come up with a conclusion at the end um, and yeah, help you make an informed purchase. Um, this is unscripted, um, so yeah, not so much, uh, not high quality, uh, production quality, but uh, yeah, I'll do my best. So yeah, let's go through the specs first. Um, this is the uh, Series D Bordeaux dial with the uh, burgundy Bordeaux strap as well. We do have some other straps here we'll be talking about. Uh, and the watch measures uh, 40 millimeters, actually 40.8 uh, millimeters um, uh, width. We have 10.8 uh, uh, millimeter height, including the crystal. So very thin uh, watch uh, in my opinion here. Uh, and we have a lock to lock of 46.5. Um, the watch has 30 uh, meters water resistant. It has a, a Chevet type sapphire with inner AR coating. Uh, and inside this lovely watch, we have a Jouperet G100 movement, which is actually the first watch, uh, I think one of the first watches to feature this new in-house movement, uh, which I'll be talking a little bit about uh, in the quality section of this review. But uh, yeah, those are pretty much uh, the specs. Um, so yeah, what is Elke Watch Company? Um, it's actually an old brand, um, and if you go to my uh, website, hypenstyle.fr, where I have my written review in English and French of this watch, there's a picture of one of their vintage watches. So this is a brand that's been around for a while, uh, but they stopped production and was recently revived uh, with these two collections. So we have the Series D, which I'm holding here, and the Series X, which is a bit more of a field watch type uh, watch, basically the same case, uh, but just with a different dial. Uh, which is also really, really nice. But uh, yeah, I thought this deserved uh, some more spotlight. Um, and yeah, let's talk design of this specific uh, Series D. I think the keyword here is simple, simplistic. Uh, you know, very simple Beton style uh, hands, Beton style indices. And at first glance on the website, this watch just feels simple, almost too simple. It doesn't do it justice. Uh, but the first thing that stands out completely when you get this watch in hand is the dial. I mean, this sunburst dial is super glossy, almost liquid, um, and just goes from dark, almost black, to like bright red, go through blood, burgundy, all these different types of colors. Really pops in sunlight, uh, remains understated inside, uh, and really a joy to look at. Uh, and yeah, not only that, but this entire dial kind of curves downwards toward the edges, something we see on a lot of vintage watches, Omegas, etc. And everything else follows that nice curvy trend. Uh, so the hands uh, and the indices also curve downwards, uh, which is just really, really cool and something you don't see in the pictures on the website, uh, but that deserves to be uh, spoken about here. And honestly, it's also makes this watch more expensive to make. Everything has to be curved. It's not just a simple straight line. Um, so yeah, really, really cool design element. Um, the other thing is the Sapphire Chevy is basically hard to make and tries to mimic the Hesselite of the vintage watches. So it gives very interesting distortions. And there's this circle, flat circle in the middle, which matches perfectly with the inside of the markings, the indices here. So kind of a very interesting uh, Sapphire that I don't see a lot, uh, but yeah, really, really gives nice and funky distortions uh, to the dial at certain uh, angles. And if we take a look at the case as well, it's very fluid. Uh, the lugs are quite big, so we have a very thin side here. Uh, and if we look at the underside of the lugs, they uh, curve, they have this nice interesting curve that finishes in the tip here, um, almost reminiscent of the logo, which you can see here, uh, the shape of the logo at least. Maybe I'm reaching a little bit here, but uh, bear with me. Um, and then we got this nice bevel if we can even call this a bevel at the top here, very nice edge, um, so very thick lugs, but on the wrist, you'll see on the wrist, this underbelly disappears and kind of gives this watch a nice uh, fluid uh, look on the wrist. Um, inside the lugs as well, there's a nice little polished bevel. The insides is also polished, so very nice attention to detail and quality here. And the case has a notch between the lugs so that when you put this strap in, uh, there's really no uh, there's zero space between the case and strap. So really, really cool element uh, design uh, feature, I would say, uh, that just makes the strap look like it's almost going under it. Like it's really part of the watch. I hate when there's too much space between the, the, the strap and the case. So really, really well thought uh, out watch design, in my opinion. Uh, we can take a quick look at the case bag. It's also nicely rounded and fluid. Um, and yeah, great attention uh, to detail, uh, in my opinion. And 
I think this this is really my favorite watch style, uh, this burgundy with the strap that just matches perfectly. Uh, but I will say they have a light blue version and a pink version of this watch, which I'm also <laughs> would love to see in real life because again, the pictures on the website don't do them justice at all. Um, so yeah, um, I approve of this design. It's simple, but you fall in love with the details. Uh, which is also something you pay for. We can talk about price uh, in a minute, but uh, yeah, you really fall in love with these small details and the stunning dial. Um, yeah, and that's that's that's. I think they nailed it. Uh, very minimalistic, very simple. Not too much text on the dial. Just Elke Watch Company uh, says automatic, Swiss made here. So trying to keep it simple, um, which I love. So okay, let's talk quality here because um, this is not a cheap watch. I think we're we're going into the entry level. Uh, luxury entry-level watches in terms of, of price range. Uh, these watches go for 1,625 Swiss franc, um, plus or minus taxes, I'm not really sure. Uh, go to their website, uh, or you can always reach out to the owner. Um, so that's that's not cheap, right? Um, especially for this blog and what I review normally. Um, so what do you get for your money? The price is completely justified, but when looking at the pictures, we don't really get that idea right away. Uh, but one of the things, first of all, I mean, the dial, the fact that it's curving, that all these elements are curving. But if we take a closer look here, let me see if I can get something in. Uh, we can see the hands are not flat. They have this nice uh, edge running down the middle, so kind of like a double-handed uh, sword style, uh, which just gives them more surfaces to play with the light. Sorry, my fingerprints. Uh, the same goes for the indices. They also have this pyramid uh, shape running down. Uh, which is just, you know, instead of these flat hands, these are just harder to make and the polishing is exceptional. Even under a loop, there's no sign of machining, uh, which is great and something I kind of would expect, uh, but even on higher priced, uh, priced uh, watches. Um, the sunburst effect is supremely um, discreet. So the lines from the sunburst effect, usually, for example, on Rolexes, you kind of, you can see the lines, they're very crisp. Uh, and here it's almost glossy and disappears. So you almost don't notice them. And then once you go out in the light, you can then see the lines of the sunburst uh, brushed effect. Um, so yeah, very glossy. Reminds me of Oris divers. They tend to have this very glossy sunburst effect as well, which suits this watch perfectly. Uh, the date is perfectly centered in the aperture here. So that's, uh, that's uh, given, of course, at this price range, in my opinion. Um, also very nice printing here, especially on the dial here, this Elka watch company. Um, they have a little serif, even under a loop, the print looks really, really good. Uh, so kudos to that. Um, again, finish on the case, the brushed finish, comparable to something like Breitling, in my opinion. Uh, very, very well done. The lines between brushed and polished is also very good. You can see the lugs here. There's a nice crisp line. There's no sign of, of, of uh, welding or anything like this. Um, so yeah, case-wise, finishing metal, it's really, really uh, what you would expect. Uh, even for something a little bit more pricey. Um, the leather strap is supremely soft. So this is veal uh, leather. It's very, very soft, very malleable. And a big surprise to me, this underside has microfiber. Uh, so extremely soft and comfortable to wear. Uh, it smells good. It looks good. This is a great strap. And if we take a look at the buckle here, custom buckle for Elka, nicely deeply engraved logo, a bit discreet. Um, and yeah, the feeling and finishing of this buckle is, again, comparable to something like uh, on a, a Breitling, I would say, except Breitling has a, perhaps, puts a bit more money on the logo part, uh, I would say, but still, perfectly, like, it's just perfectly fits here, it's not going to rock off, and it's the feeling here of this finishing is very, very good, so nice custom buckle that goes well with this uh, watch, um, yeah, um, also part of the quality is, of course, the movement, which is invisible here, but uh, the G100 from Joupere is... Uh, I would say kind of a higher end when it comes to manufacturer movements, uh, mass produced at least. I don't know if we can call it mass produced, but um, uh, I would say, yeah, a lot of watches uh, in higher price ranges still have Salidas. And I think the G100 is a really good bet uh, for these higher end micro brands when they want to put something really nice in, especially since we lost the ETAs. Uh, they're not selling to micro brands anymore. I'm speaking 2428-2, uh, I think, was one of the workhorses. Um, so this movement actually uh, beats at 4 hertz, so 8 ticks per second, and uh, it has 68 hours of power reserve, which is also a really nice feature, something the new Rolex mo uh, um, models have as well. Um, and you don't know you need this until you actually own it and realize you can just leave it for three days and you can still pick it up and wear it. 
Uh, and then you see all your other watches have stopped. So kind of a cool feature that I'm almost addicted to now. The only two watches in my collection that have this is this and uh, my Rolex uh, Datejust. So uh, very, very cool, uh, very well finished movement. You get a lot more uh, machining uh, tolerances, etc. And the same goes for any tolerance in this watch. Again, it's hard to show, but the hands are very close to the dial. So they're not floating above it. Uh, so there's just, you know, a lot of um, a lot of uh, details and, and um, tolerances are really high here when it comes to this watch. So quality wise, the price is completely justified. Uh, let me just go through the two straps we have here as well. Um, you can buy uh, this on a NATO strap. I would really suggest for the Series D to go with the leather that matches, especially for this model, because the leather color matches perfectly this dial. So really kudos to this strap. This is perfect matching. Uh, but it also really looks good on a dark blue. The red and blue matches perfectly. This is nothing special. It's a pretty good NATO strap. It would, I wouldn't say it's cheap. It's thick. It's soft. Um, doesn't have the custom um, uh, the clasp here. Doesn't have the custom clasp uh, or oh, buckle. Sorry, not clasp. Buckle. Uh, but still pretty good. Still has the logo and quite soft and nice to wear. Um, and you can also get this on a Milanese or mesh strap. Uh, and these are really good. Again, this is just uh, one of those generic mass-produced ones where you slap on the logo, uh, but that does mean it's not uh, good quality. Uh, it feels good, solid, it's thick. Uh, this mechanism is nice and easy to use unless you have, uh, unless you bite your nails like I do. I'm sorry for that. Uh, but yeah, no, really, really good uh, Milanese strap. I don't think it's the best uh, option for this watch. If you really like this kind of strap, go for it. I, I suggest, I, I really love the leather strap in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, not not bad. Really good quality. Um, and yeah, the only better Milanese straps you can get uh, is probably Breitlings and they're custom. So yeah. So yeah, overall, uh, if you go for this kind of watch, uh, I would suggest go for the leather strap and then perhaps have a NATO uh, on the side to match and you know kind of dress it down a little bit. Um, so yeah, um, overall, quality wise, this matches the price pretty well. Um, you get a lot for your money, a lot of attention to detail, high tolerances, good finishing. Yeah, all around just really, really good watch. Uh, and I'm going to show you a wrist shot. A wrist check today, Breitling Headwind from 03. Put you over here and put this watch on my 17 centimeter circumference wrists, just to show you what it looks like in terms of sizing. So. There we go. So again, 17 centimeters circumference. This watch looks great on my wrist. I would say if you have very small wrists, this is probably not the best watch. Um, and it feels bigger because it's just all dial. There is no bezel or anything like this. Um, but yeah, I, I really like the size here. And also it's very thin, which kind of helps make it a little less bulky in terms of size. Uh, I wish he could uh, come up with a 36 millimeter version of this watch, specifically the Series D, because yeah, it's quite dressy and uh, yeah, I, not all men have uh, big wrists. I wouldn't even consider mine very big. Uh, but yeah, very flush uh, to the wrist, very comfortable due to this awesome strap. And uh, yeah, just a, a really well uh, made watch. Um, so yeah, conclusion. Um, the Elke Series D is really, really stunning watch with a stunning dial, good, lovely strap, well finished, well made, got a great movement inside. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, uh, you're, you're getting, uh, you know, it's not cheap, but you're getting a lot for your money anyway, uh, like with most micro brands. And the owner is very passionate. He's been working in the watch industry for a while. You can tell this has been well thought out, uh, watch design, uh, and production. So kudos to this. I can highly recommend Elka watches. Go check out their uh, website. Um, and remember the pictures don't do it justice. These watches are stunning in real life. Um, hope you enjoyed the review. Um, and yeah, have a lovely day.